I just saw the most nauseating news story I have ever seen in my entire life. And it came out yesterday and you paid for it, actually. No, you didn't pay for it with your Daily Wire subscription. You paid for it with your tax dollars because it was on NPR. And I'm going to urge listener discretion right now and viewer discretion. If, if you have a weak stomach, just skip forward one minute right now. Just one minute, that's all it's really going to take. Because NPR aired the audio of a woman's abortion. NPR aired the the room with the doctors, you know, with the abortionists, and a mother murdering her own child. And play the tape. She's from Michigan. She already has one kid. She's having her abortion at about 11 weeks. Nearly all abortions in Michigan are before 13 weeks. Put a pause right there. I just had, well, I didn't just have my second child. My wife had my second child. But, you know, it's, it's a group effort, at least to some degree. I participated, at least, you know, in the very beginning. And uh, we would go to the sonograms. 11 weeks, not only do you know the sex of your child, not only are the basic features of your child quite formed at that point. 11 weeks, that baby is a baby. That baby is moving around. That baby is recognizable as a baby. 11 weeks is, is pretty far along. And so they're saying this, this woman who's already got one child out here in the world is going into this room to murder her child who is 11 weeks, who is, you know that this baby is a baby. You know, mothers, mothers know really instantly, but, and, and you know that this mother knows that this baby is a baby because the mother is crying in the audio and it's not tears of joy. Again, if you've got a weak stomach, just skip ahead one or two clicks right now and you'll move past the audio. I think it's important to hear it though, because I think that this news story completely backfired on NPR. And like many patients at Northland, she said I could record her procedure. We're going to hear some of that now. Okay, so I am just going to get you set up on the table, and we're going to do that sedation medicine. Okay. I'm going to pull this out under your legs. Most patients are partially awake during the procedures. They get IV medication for pain and anxiety. The lights are dimmed. There's soothing music. It actually feels a lot like a childbirth. The medical gown, your bare legs and stirrups, and a person next to you saying... You can do this. Use my hand and just keep breathing. That's Brandy. She's one of the staffers. Her job is to monitor vital signs, but it is also to hold the patient's hand and talk her through this. Whether it's a birth or an abortion, it is often women guiding other women. You're going to hear this machine turn on now. Okay, it makes a loud noise. Blow it out, blow it out, breathe it, breathe it, blow it out. Listen to me, blow it out. If you hold your breath, it just makes it harder for you. Keep breathing. Keep just keep breathing, Brandy tells her over and over. I can't, the patient says at one point, when the cramps get painful. Yes, you can, Brandy tells her. You're doing it. And then within just a couple of minutes, it's over. All right, we're done. Take some deep breaths for me. Catch your breath. You did it. Thank you so much. You, did. you are welcome. Oh, I didn't. I didn't look too bad. You did, you did great. <laughs> you did just fine. Yeah. I really went back and forth over whether to play that on the show or not because it's truly nauseating, and I bet that I, I bet that many of you are sick to your stomach hearing it. And it's not because you haven't, it's not because you haven't seen violence before or heard violence or probably seen or heard people die on video. I mean, we see crime videos. We've see, seen videos from war, real video. I'm not talking about Hollywood or anything like that. You, you've seen news footage from wars. You've, you've, you've seen crime videos. You've, you've probably seen or heard people die before. There's something especially nauseating about this, even compared to crime videos or war videos because it's a mother doing it. And the way, the way that this NPR host introduces it, she says, 
You know, it's in many ways, this procedure is a lot like giving birth. Yeah, it is because you are giving birth. It's just instead of giving birth to a living baby to nurture this baby and care for this baby as you ought to do, you're giving birth to a baby that you've likely already killed in the womb. And then you're giving birth to it to throw them away in the trash. So it's, it's, it's just, it's just nauseating. And someone wrote in when this story was going viral. The, re- the reason I ended up deciding that we should play it on the air is because this was, this was on national public radio. This was as public as it could possibly be. Public in the sense that, yes, it was aired in, on a mainstream platform, but public in that our political system paid for it. You paid for, for this to, to air. And I believe the reason that NPR chose to do it, because NPR is very far left and why we fund it, I have no idea. But the reason they chose to do it is because they think that it's going to destigmatize and demystify abortion. Well, yes, it will demystify abortion because it will get rid of the euphemisms that people always use. Reproductive rights, women's health care, all these euphemisms that are actually are deceptive, that actually not, not only do they sugarcoat the procedure, but they, they invert it. They say it's, it's reproductive. It's not. It's the opposite of reproductive. They say it's healthcare. It's not healthcare. It's murder. And, and so it, it demystifies it, but I don't think it destigmatizes it. I think it, it really demonstrates to people why there is a stigma around abortion. There's a stigma around abortion because it's the murder of a child. And so I think it completely backfires. And I think it's actually important to amplify this for, for people to see, to, to, and to hear, to hear the reality of it. Some mouthy lib that I saw on social media when I posted this along with other people uh, said, oh, you're so sickened by this. What, you've never seen video of a school shooting? And I thought, first of all, no, I, I never have seen video of a school shooting. I don't, I don't know that anyone has. Are there videos of the school shootings? I don't think so. But furthermore, even if such a thing existed, this would be worse. Be, because killing is a fact of life. This is a fallen world and it's a sin that just exists. There is murder in the world and there's war and there's just regular street murder and there's even, there's even murder in high schools and there's even murder of poor little children and all these things. But it's even worse when the murderer is the mother. It's so much more perverse. I mean, this was Mother Teresa's speech to the UN. She said the, the biggest problem in the world today, the, the, the cause of, of political evils more so than any other cause is abortion. Because if a mother can kill her own child, then there's nothing that, that anyone won't do. Absolutely horrifying stuff. All right, there's more to get to. I've got the regular old written mailbags. I'm going to get to a few of those in the member block. And then it is fake headline Friday. So I will need your help. Ben Davies has given me four real headlines, one fake headline. He's going to test my ability to understand our always absurd news cycle to parse fact from fiction. The show continues now. You don't want to miss it. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.